Hello everybody and welcome to Rogue State Revolution. Uh, for those of you who are new, I'm Katmandu. And in this episode, yeah, we're going to try out this new game and have a little first look at this game. Uh, it's currently on Steam's uh, Autumn Festival at the, minute, at the moment as a demo. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to go and check it out, you're more than welcome to. Uh, it's basically, I guess, the best sort of game I could sort of compare it to, I guess, is sort of a Tropico. In a way, obviously you guys will see in a moment why I say that. It's quite sort of hard to sort of explain the game. It's basically sort of like, um, I guess, sort of uh, city skylines type game. But you obviously you like uh, you like the president, so you have to set law. You know what I mean? It's sort of quite hard to explain, but obviously you'll see as as we go along. But like I said, the best game I can sort of compare it to as I guess Tropico. Um, so yeah, so if you like them type of games and you're looking forward to this, because I'm looking forward to it. Uh, if you enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Uh, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, both the likes and subscribes really do help the channel out massively. So if you could show your support, man, I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys would like to get in touch with me, in the description down below is all my contact details. You can go and check all that out. Uh, if you guys would like to be in with a chance of winning the giveaway at 500 subs, don't forget to be subscribed as well. Don't forget to come and join the Discord so I can notify you if you win. But it's also a great place to come and hang out and chat and leave all your suggestions in there. If you've got any suggestions on future videos, future games, uh, any suggestions on the channel, how, can I, how I can improve it or whatever, then leave, leave it all in the Discord, as well as in the comments as well. Comment away. It's all, it's all good. And uh, yeah, don't forget to smash that notification bell as well, so you guys will get notified when I upload a video or when I live stream as well, so it's very handy indeed. Um, so yeah, so the premise of the game is basically we sort of like, the, it's like a um, fictional country uh, that sort of been set into sort of like a civil war type thing obviously the country's in despair uh despair sorry and uh yeah we're basically having to come in as a president and basically rebuild the country from the bottom up so you guys will see shortly uh turn the music up a little bit because it's quite good i uh, just don't want it to be too loud uh yeah obviously i had to i i've not that I've played the game a little bit, but I've had to come on the game a little bit because I've had to sort of tweak with the settings a little bit because obviously it doesn't run too good. I think it may be because it's a demo, but um, yeah, I think we'll just start a new game and then let's see what happens. So obviously leader surname is, um, we'll just put Cat. My leader surname is Cat. Actually, no, it wouldn't be Cat, would it? That would be my first name. It would be, our surname is uh, Mandu. <laughs> uh, first name's Cat. Last name's Mandu, um, so <laughs> so that would be that. Storyline always play, news updates always play. Just leave all these on. Game difficulty, we'll have it just on very easy. I just want to have a look at the game. Just want to have a very just sort of basic look of the game, I guess. Right, let's start up. So as you read there, 2012 to 2017. I think that goes quite quickly, so you might you might have to pause it to read it all. So that's up to you guys if you want to read that. And here we go. In Basenji today. There is a mood of jubilation as thousands crowd the streets in celebration. The first ever democratic election in the People's Republic of Basenji is a success. Five years ago, the monarchy was replaced by a transitional government. And now, finally, after great struggle, democracy has come to Basenji. For the first time in their turbulent history, both Basenji and ethnic Karifi are voting for a government of their choice. Twelve political parties campaigned, representing a wide political spectrum, with the largest, the Basenji Nationalist Party, sweeping the election with 72% of the vote. Good morning, Your Excellency. My name is Sibiria. I have been assigned as your political strategist. And I am Yusuf. I will be serving as your military attaché. The first task before you is to appoint cabinet roles for representatives from across our great nation. These are critical positions. Once appointed, cabinet members are constitutionally protected. They cannot be removed from office. Indeed, you will be stuck with these ministers, for better or worse. I would advise you listen to their needs. And I say look for loyalty. There will be hard days ahead. We will need a cabinet that is on our side. No matter what. 
Right, okay, so there's our advisors. Excellently, it's time for us to form the government responsible for building uh, Basenji uh, Grand Future. Right, appoint cabinet. Right, so here we go. So we've got our appoint our cabinet now. You've got the Ministry of Deployment, uh, responsible for transportation, health, education and networks. Ministry of Citizenship, responsible for border policy, the status of citizens and cultural programs. Ministry of Defence, obviously armed, for uh, armed forces and intelligence. Ministry of Finance, uh, taxation and regulation for people's financial behaviour. Ministry of Natural Resources, responsible for policies pertaining to energy and natural resources. Ministry of Foreign Affairs, responsible for international relations and trade. Ministry for Justice, responsible for policing and the judicial system. Right, so we've got to choose from these uh, four people. As you can see, you can uh, scan over each one and it gives you, um, well, this advisor tells you one thing, this one tells you the other. So as you can see, like Suleiman comes from old money, the eldest son of a property baron. He's more likely to be seen in the nightclub than in his office. In spite of it all, he's widely popular with the people and his personal policies are relatively uncontroversial. Increases approval from the public in his home province. Uh, Suleiman is an insufferable social influencer whose political leanings um, uh, amount to uh, vapid, vapid platitudes and glamour sh shots. He's used to being the centre of attention wherever he goes and that has made him quite selfish. Ignoring his request has a greater impact on his loyalty to you. Right, so as you can see, when you hover over him on the right hand side, you've got the Ministry of Deplo uh, Development, Ministry of Defence and Ministry of Finance. They light up, so they can only be put in one of them three. Obviously, you click and you drag him into one of, three, uh, one of them three. Um, so obviously, they're saying he's quite a popular figure. Uh, so, and he can only be put in one of them three, so I wouldn't really put him as an armed force guy. Uh, transport, health, education and networks, or finance. Um, increases approval from the public in his home province. Ah, taxation and regulation of your people's financial behaviour. Responsible for transportation, health, education and networks. Uh, it's going to be a tough one, I think, for him. Uh, as you can see as well, they could, some of them can do the same job. So he can do Ministry of Deployment as well as him. But obviously, he can't do Defence or Finance. He does Natural Resources and Foreign Affairs. So I guess you've got to put, choose, you choose all four, but you have to put them in uh, like four of these seven categories. So I think with him, we'll leave him for now. All right, this guy, uh, Adad. With respect, serving under General Adad was the greatest honour of my career, an aspiring hero of both the Basenji Revolution and our Civil War. He, he, was, he is possibly the one person our nation's conservatives and liberals can agree on. Inspiring. Civilian units uh, specific to his department get a free upgrade. Yes, he carries with him a lot of the baggage of our violent history, but what's more concerning to me at the moment is that Adad get getting quite old and is reportedly in poor health. We may find ourselves needing to replace him with a less desirable candidate in the future if the worst does happen. Minister can die at any time or not at all. Uh, he definitely sounds like, um, obviously he says General Adad, so he seems best for Ministry of Defence, I think. Uh, she's a successful human rights lawyer, an acclaimed university lecturer, philanthropist, and well-published expert of Basenji's political history. There's a lot of appointments that would fit her portfolio. Her ministry operates with zero cost. Nice. Not so fast, Karim. Uh, the water cooling talk is Nazar is a functioning addict hooked on painkillers. What? This might prove a problem for our administration. The minister will vanish for a few turns occasionally. No request could be fulfilled for that minister whilst absent. Approval in the minister's home province will steadily drop whilst absent. Yeah, but she's a judge, basically. Human rights lawyer. So probably a ministry of justice would probably be the best job for her. Um, <clears throat> Aziz is an interesting man. He lost his wife in the first revolution and swore to build a better Basenji for his two daughters. He's quite frugal. With a good track record of fiscal responsibility, you can probably count on him to run a tight ship wherever you decide to place him. Uh, construction costs lowered for buildings rel uh, rel uh, related to his ministry. Ignoring the rumours that he's connected to organised crime syndicates, I'll say he's a cunning manipulator. Be careful what position you award him because the second you take your eyes off him, he'll change the script if he believes it benefits his own ambitions. He may alter policies in his ministry randomly without your consent. Oh. Nasty man. Nasty man.
Right, so he's got daughters. He wants a better, good track up record. Probably count on him to tight ship. Ministry of Deployment probably going to be best for him. I think he can oversee things like that for a better, better thing. Uh, she's definitely going to go into Ministry of Justice. He's definitely going in Ministry of Defence. It's just these two I'm unsure of. <clears throat> uh, he's popular. Ministry of Finance might be good for him. He, obviously, he can only do one or the other. Probably run a tight ship. If he can run a tight ship, I'd like him to be good at that, I think. Transportation, health, education. He'd be quite sort of firm with it, I think. <coughs> I think foreign affairs and that one I'm not too fussed about at the moment. Because obviously... I think Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Development are going to be the two main ones that I want to look into. So I'm going to go for him for that one and then him for the finance, I think. Because he's popular, if we up taxes, they might not get too upset because he's popular. So, right, let's confirm. Right, here we go. This is how the game is, sort of, roughly. So, just going to have a little drink there. Uh, yeah, so basically, Excellency, whilst you get settled in your new office, I've scheduled your agenda for the next uh, few weeks. Are you interested in hearing it? Uh, yeah, sure. First order of business, I've learned that our national power plant has not received a fuel shipment in weeks. It appears the roads that previously connected the oil refinery to the power plant were destroyed in the Civil War. By constructing a new ro road, oil will automatically be transported from the refinery to the power plant and electricity can be restored to Basenji. Uh, building a road costs both an action point, think of it as political capital, and treasury funds. Once spent, we can build as many roads as we need to in this month without spending additional action points. Ensure both the power plant and oil refinery are connected to the same road network. I understand. Uh, so yeah, so you might see frame drops a little bit when I move. Uh, like I said, the game's not massively um, <coughs> optimised at the moment. But it is just a demo. So yeah, like I said, it does run okay. Don't get me wrong. You, you won't really see that much of a difference. I don't think I do, but you probably won't. I don't know. Alright, so take action, build roads. Right, and then you click on, if I can remember. Uh, let's click on, say there. Click and hold, and we'll drag it up. Next bit there. Excellent, there we go. Excellent, at the end of this month, oil will reach the power plant, which will be uh, burned in order to provide electricity for our people. On a personal note, I, I'm relieved to finally be able to recharge my phone. Now, on to the next major issue. After the Civil War, the United Nations established emergency aid camps to distribute food rations to our people. <coughs> if we were to establish new agricultural fields somewhere in uh, Basenji to replace those that were devastated last year, we can produce our own food and have a new source of revenue to grow our treasury. And later, we can slowly dismantle those uh, UN camps before they start to become a nuisance. Uh, agricultural fields can only be placed on fertile terrain, coloured green on the map. So here... Uh, I might suggest placing an agricultural field here, but of course it is entirely your choice. From the right sidebar, click construction. From there, choose the agricultural field. Not only does construction consume an action point and treasury funds, but we'll need to ensure that there are workers available to, uh, to labour there. At the moment, unemployment is high enough nationwide that you should be okay. <clears throat> right, I understand. Right, so as you can see, this is Basen uh, Basenji at a glance. So uh, each, there's uh, provinces to the country. So you've got uh, Banifa, you've got um, Karak, Karak uh, Saber, uh, Quarif, and Rumay, Rumay, Rumay. Uh, and obviously, yeah, as I zoom all the way out, like you might have to excuse the frames, but if I zoom all the way out, you can see them. So you've got Rumay there. Uh, that was the um, Banifa. That's a Karak, a Saber. I think that was it, weren't it? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, Roman. Where's Romani then? Quarif. One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, that's right. Right, we've got no power, but I look to it. Look, power generation. He's down. That's money. Predicted income is up by plus three. Obviously, as you can see there, the approval. Uh, Banafi is the home province of the nation's capital. Uh, Ma Majimara, 
It is considered to be largely liberal and urban, though most of the population practice the old ways in some form. So you've got approvals, 51%, workforce, 24 and obviously they're all different, 49, 50, 49, 50, workforce is 19, 21, 15, 22, 24. So obviously different places have different workforce. So she said, did she say about building it in Banafi? I want to build it there because there's more of a workforce, I think. So let me zoom over, let me zoom down. Yeah, it might look a little bit like, like it might judder and stutter a little bit, but it should be all right. Uh, so there's the capital. What? province is that it's that color right okay so let's go let's put it in this town here where this greenery is i wish i could just spin it around a little bit i think you can i'm not 100 percent sure though maybe not right so as you can see like you can zoom right in to see like there you go like you see the cars see like the little buildings and stuff so obviously like yeah it's pretty good it's pretty good i quite enjoy it <clears throat> right so build an agricultural field so we go to construction and then look at all these. Look, like this is why it reminds me a lot of Tropico. You got a lot of lot of things to do in this game. Incredible, incredible game. Agricultural field. Uh, we'll plop that down. I think it's got to be adjacent to a to a field uh, to a. Oh, we can flip it there. We can't rotate this. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna put it. Uh, see, it snaps into certain places as well. I'm gonna put it there. Yep, that's the building. Uh, for now, the people of this city will be satisfied if they are able to put food on their plates. As food supply increases, you can safely dismantle those UN camps without too much disruption. <clears throat> uh, we could spend funds and an action point to build a second agricultural field to support the anticipated growth in our city's demand next month. Or, alternative, we, uh, alternatively, we could address the health crisis currently facing the province of Saba. Uh, constructing a regional hospital adjacent to a city somewhere in this province would provide immediate care for those wounded during the Basaji civil war. If healthcare gets too low in any province, the citizens of that province will hold you accountable. The same is true for public safety, education, prosperity, entertainment or the environment. Uh, the choice is yours. Future proof your economy and construct another agricultural field or build a regional hospital adjacent to a city somewhere in the province of Saba to care for our wounded. Um... <coughs> I think if I look here, you've got like these little points. And obviously the healthcare there is red, it's two. Here we're okay. Everywhere else looks like we're okay. Look, all these points are good, they're good, they're good. So there's bad. So I understand. I think I'm going to build the hospital because I'm nice like that. So let's zoom all the way in. Okay, uh, what have we got here? It's like a desert land. Um, so we can build it here or there. Right, so we've got a UN thing there. I think that, yeah, that's for food. So if we've got food on that one, <coughs> we'll put a hospital in here, I think. So let's construct a hospital. Well, we have to put it sort of like, sort of in the city, as you can see. It has to be adjacent to a city. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, coffees. I'm going to put it right there. That's a very nice place to put it, I think. Bang that there. Beautiful. Well done, Excellency. Thank you for putting your faith in me. You may have noticed that buildings consume both workers and power. Uh, p power. Uh, getting more power is a question of building more power plants. Getting more workers, however, is a much bigger problem. Uh, the number of workers available is derived from the number of c uh, citizens that in that province, minus the buildings uh, where they're already working. For now, it is prudent to spread your buildings out between your provinces so that you don't end up with a worker shortage. We can talk more about the workers later. Oh, Banafi is glowing. Hang on a sec. Need more of a drink. <clears throat> Got a bit of a tickly throat. Alright, let me show you how to take a quick look at how we're doing province by province. Click on Banafi, Banafa, Ban, Bani, Banifa in the right sidebar. Right, click on that. Whoa, okay, too many graphs for me. Too many lines, too many lines. I know there's a lot of lines here. Yeah, you're telling me. Uh, but we can learn a lot from this screen. The upper graph shows your current approval levels in Banifa by demographic over the past 10 months. The lower graph shows that province's rate, uh, rating for pros... Prosperity, education, health, safety, the environment, and entertainment. Keeping these 
from getting too low, the red zone, is going to be crucial if you wish to be re-elected. Okay, so everything's sort of going up. Well, so they're all... Oh, I see. So their healthcare's now gone up because I built the... No, I didn't build the... No, never mind. Scrap that. All right, so safety's blue. Environment's green. Prosperity is like the orange. Entertainment is purple. Entertainment seems to stop, though. Somewhere. I can't see it at the end. Health is red, and then education is yellow. Okay. Uh, Excellency, our economy is pretty stagnant right now, which will limit our opportunities to better this great nation. I have a plan, however, that will give us a little extra boost. With your permission, I'd like to review our national budget with you. Uh, okay. Ah, oh, here we go. Action. Take action. Review budget. <coughs> uh, a lot of things outside of our control can affect uh, Basenji's monthly revenue. City growth, immigration, the price of commodities, our transportation infrastructure. So what we're looking at is our experts' best estimates based on a snapshot of the country as it stands today. We may need to consider some temporary provisional funding cuts until we get our economy jump-started. I'll leave it. I'll leave it you to decide where, but ultimately I propose you cut just enough to establish a positive cash flow. <coughs> right, so we've got a big, <coughs> we've got a big uh, decision to make here. So at the minute, it's saying <coughs> predicted income is coming in at 106, but expenses is coming in at 107. So we're at a total of a minus one. So we need to cut back. <clears throat> I'd say two things, isn't it, really? You need to cut back two things to make that into, like, uh, a plus one. Uh, I'm having a look at people's approval at the minute in places. It's all fairly low. Benifa's 49. Let's try and cut some in at 49. So, Quarif and Benifa. Uh, let's see. Uh, these funds go towards protecting Basenji's beautiful natural spaces. Setting this high will boost the province's environmental scores. Low environmental scores upset everyone. But Basenji's liberals will be particularly unhappy. Okay, I'm not I'm not cutting back on safety anywhere, or health, or education. <coughs> what is this? These funds help businesses grow and improve Basenji's overall economy. Setting this high will boost the province's pro uh, prosperity scores. Low prosperity scores upset everyone, but Basenji's conservatives will be particularly... Yeah, uh, we that's to do with income, business growth and stuff. I don't want to mess with that. These funds pay for parades and concerts, as well as the museums, breaches, historical sites and amusement facilities that draw tourists to Bazanji. Setting this high will boost the province entertainment scores. Low entertainment scores upset everyone equally. <coughs> yeah, but everything else, to me, is more important than this. Uh, that's just my view on it. Uh, obviously, that is important, I think. Environmental stuff. Public safety is really important. Health is really important. Education is really important. Subsidies, like obviously business growth and stuff. Obviously, more business grows. That's more income. That's more profit for the country. So that's really important. <coughs> I guess that's really important for things like um, tourism. Uh, special events, obviously, can make people happy. But we need to make some cuts somewhere. So I think I'm going to cut back on one on there. Uh, the 49, so that's 49 and that one's 49, so let's cut back on them, and then we're making a profit. Uh, let's confirm changes. Very good, I've got some more ideas on how we can increase our national treasury, tell me. Excellency, we have just used up all of our actions for this month, let us re uh, reconverse next month. Okay, so we next turn, so it's like turn based as well, okay. Good morning, Excellency. Well, good month. Ah, look, we got power back. Yay! What power? And we got predicting incomes up, intelligence is up. Okay. Uh, oh, Excellency, your ministries are where you set all the policies uh, specific to our nation. Click on the Ministry of Finance for now. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> You place Minister Karim Suleiman in charge of finance. Over time, they uh, research new policies for our nation. If you keep them happy by fulfilling the requests they routinely bring to us, that research gets completed faster. <coughs> you can choose which policy opportunities any minister is going to research by clicking on it. Researching regulate 
cryptocurrency, for example, will yield, will yield small financial benefit to our nation at the expense of nationwide prosperity. Ministers that aren't given direction will conduct research based on their own values and interests. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Uh, setting our tax policy to regressive will increase our treasury if the majority of our population is poor. Essentially, the people who are most benefiting from public services will be expected to pay greater taxes. Our nation's liberals will absolutely hate this move, but maybe we can win back their trust in other ways. Set our tax policy to regressive. Okay. Are you sure you want to order this policy direction? Proceed. If you don't chat me. Good, we might also be able to save some money on our transportation network. I suggest you visit the Ministry of Development. Okay. Fiscal responsibility. Proceed, okay. <clears throat> now we're in much better shape. Those policy changes won't be popular, but they'll bring more funds to our treasury faster. Excellent, uh, excellency, we should create a surveyor... To scout for new resources, resources will eventually make it possible for us to sell more complex products for our cities. But for now, we can export these raw materials to our neighbour if the demand exists. Click on the palace at Mari Majimara by either finding it on the map or clicking on the palace fast action button in the sidebar from the palace select train surveyor. Ah, oh, so there we go. There's the fast track. <coughs> train resource surveyor. Oh, look at him go. Go on, son. All right, click on the surveyor. You've just trained to see things from his perspective. Excellency. Uh, there is a possible resource node located on a tile not too far from his current location. Click and drag a line from the surveyor to that mystery node. Once the surveyor is on or next to the resource node, click survey adjacent tile from the surveyor interface. Not all resource nodes pan out. See, so sending surveyors across Bisanji to check them all will be necessary. So where's this node then? Oh, is it here? So click and drag. Very well. Excellency. Dig. Surge survey adjacent tile. Oh, you discovered a deposit of oil. Nice. <coughs> Another oil deposit. Uh, well, this is helpful. That is helpful. That's uh, that's money. That's cash money. Excellency, we have used up all our action points for this month. Let us reconvene, uh, reconvene next month. Okay. What's action point? Is that that one? <coughs> I don't know. Good morning, Excellency. Let's build a new refinery on that oil deposit. Select one from the construction menu. Okay. Oil refinery. Excellency. Yeah, you need to move, bro. Uh, now our nation has two oil refineries. One is sending oil to our power plant. Perhaps we can sell the oil from this one to one of our neighbours, at least whilst we don't have a demand for plastics yet in um, Basenji. Click on the <coughs> click on the diplomacy menu. Do I not have to link this to a road first though? Missing road, yeah, missing road connection to power plants or chemical plants that demand our product. <coughs> do I need to do, do I need to do the road then? It's not connected it did. Do the road, bro. Build road. Build road. Come on now. Why is it going weird? No, I just want a road like Normal, like a normal road. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's a road, bro. Da, 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 da. How is that not a road? How is that not a road? Uh, right, let's just carry on. Let's just do what she says. Diplomacy. Relations with those other nations we share a border with can be tricky. If we can maintain a strong positive relationship, we can mutually prosper with uh, from expanded trade. If they grow to hate us too much, we may find ourselves invaded. Neighbouring states have their own interests, things they will respect and loathe us for. Spending intelligence is one way to better understand these interests. 
Ah, so these are like the different places that are sort of bordering us. <coughs> so as again, it's all fictional. But it's Zabil, Babalistan, and uh, Axdijan. Ak Ak hmm? Okay. In addition to these relationships with us, these neighbouring states also have their own internal stability to be concerned about. A collapsing neighbour means lots of refugees seeking asylum in our, in our borders, in addition to other challenges to manage. Take notice as well as uh, of the three major powers interested in influencing the future of the region, the United States of America, the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. <coughs> right, so they're real. They're like real places, obviously. Uh, if any one of these powers see us as threats to their interests, we may find ourselves in a war we cannot possibly win. If, however, we can forge a strategic alliance with one of these powers, the others may leave us alone. But that's not what matters right now. Let's see if any of our neighbours happens to have any interest in Basenji crude oil. We might as well place a call with Axtijan Ax Ax first. They seem to like us the most once they're on the phone. Select negotiate trade and then click the export tab. Then make an offer to export oil. Right, yeah, so they're cordial. They're 50% and they're not very good. Okay, let's call them up. Hello, greetings, Excellency. My name is Prime Minister Rashid Na Nazrian of the Free State of Axtijan. I'm sorry for messing up these like pronunciations. I'm terrible. Congratulations on your recent election. The people have chosen wisely by making you to the uh, by making you to their head of state. Our two nations have a proud history of mutual cooperation. So please don't hesitate to contact me for anything you might need. Uh, negotiate. Uh, send the following instruction to our trade negotiator. Ben, uh, Basanji is offering to import up to 70 units of food. Every month. No, 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 no. A reminder, Excellency, that important agreements don't demand anything of our treasury. The cost of important goods is borne by the public, and the only negative impact is we will deny ourselves the income that comes with not producing these goods. <coughs> okay, that being said, the sheer quantity of goods. Yeah, I want to do... I thought it was oil. Export. 70 of oil. Yeah, propose. We are pleased you are able to assist us with this. We will ensure our payments to your producers are timely. Nice. Not bad at all. We're, we'll need to make sure there's a road connection between the oil refinery and the border checkpoint. Oh. With them or else our oil will never reach them and no money will be earned. Okay. Oh, okay, so that's where they border there. Babalistan border there, and then they border up there. Okay, I see. Right, so we need... It does, though, doesn't it? What is this here? Oh, that's the border. No road connection to... Ah, oh, okay, I see. That's the border. Uh, where do I put a road, though? Uh, build a road from here. Build a road up. Put a little road. Let me do a little road in here. Oh, we can put. Oh, we can put it like that. Nice. There's a road, big baby. Woo! Very good. Make sure your surveyor is on his way to find new resources for us. Over time, resource producing producing buildings will experience corruption. <coughs> Greedy hands will start cutting into our national bottom line. You should consider eventually hiring a state inspector. From the palace to travel between your resource producers and address this. For now, let that's one last thing that I would like to address. Uh, okay, so yeah, so that is going to do it for this episode, guys. Unfortunately, I have run out of time. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that anyway. Uh, if you did, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Uh, I'm going to send him over here, because why not? Excellency. Yeah, like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Uh, if you did like it, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, both the likes and subscribes really do help the channel out massively. So if you could show your support, I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, if you want to be in with a chance of winning a giveaway at 500 subs, don't forget to be subscribed as well. Uh, don't forget to come and join the Discord so I can notify you if you win. But it's also a great place to come and hang out and chat and leave your suggestions in there as well. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, hit that notification bell for me as well, then you guys will get notified when I upload a video or when I live stream as well. That's very... Very important little tool indeed. And uh, yeah, until the next time, guys, have a good one. Stay safe out there. Peace out.